Law. Is that the seal arrive? <laughs> Alright, this is Katarina. She has all of her normal abilities. In her base fight, one distinction is she can only slam during the intermissions. Not like right now, she can't use her slam until she, uh, this phase starts here. There's three phases. She'll spawn one of these little abyss bosses every single time. The order, I think it's always the same, but the positioning is not. The first one creates a bunch of degen around the edge of the arena. Um, for this reason, it's good to play the Relicage Pantheon and to have like a bubbling uh, life flask. So you can kind of walk through it if you have to with those two things. Whenever the phase ends, that's what determines uh, when she drops the degen ground. You'll see at the end of this phase, as soon as I kill this first guy, I'm going to uh, move so that the, the degen spawns in a good place. That's her slam. It's the normal standard flicker slam. She teleports to you. There's a slam. If you, if you move too early, she'll just keep teleporting and the slam gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You gotta stand still and then move. So I baited the, the, the degen like not in the best spot. Uh, she still has the same different thing. It's the same as normal. This is why you kind of need to have some good regen because she's gonna spawn them out in this little fizz degen, and it's good to be able to like potion and run through it, get rid of all the little uh, skeleton guys. I'll try not to one shot her so that we can do this. Does this teleport slam? You wait, then you go. I don't even know what these little abyss guys do, they kind of just die. Or the uh, abyss and delve dudes. So we're going to bait the Digina over here on the edge. It'd be even better if you baited it all the way outside, but there's like the Digina out there and this place isn't that bad so I usually don't bother. This is one of the fights where it feels a lot better if you have some defense because there's so much small, just like kind of unavoidable damage that isn't super lethal, but if you don't have recovery or defense, it, it's not easy to avoid, so it's good to just stat check the boss. Amen. I can't run around in circles after the boss fight because the Deacon. I just want to run in circles while I wait for loot. The bug with the Deacon is like the, the, the Deacon on the edge of the arena, the lines, just lasts forever and it just goes invisible when the boss fight ends, but it's still there forever. So the Abomination boss is the trio of Malgaro, Shav, and Doedre. With a little bit of enhanced stuff. The kill order matters. Whenever you kill one in the first phase, uh, they turn into like a ghost and new, new things happen. Until you kill all three. When you kill one, the other two kill to full. Uh, the kill order that I always use is uh, Malgaro, then Shav. And then Doedre. Doedre is bad because if you kill Doedre first, uh, there's like these cursed totems that spawn that are super annoying. Uh, they use all the same abilities they have in their fights in Act 9, if you're familiar with that. I think we've killed Malagaro. He is a ghost over here and he's gonna just continue doing weird stuff to us. He's not super impactful in his ghost form, which is why we killed him first. Shav in her humanoid form, very, very not lethal. She does like the normal stuff she does. When she becomes a ghost, she gains a few abilities that are actually dangerous. So, this like barrage of lightning from her, any melee player that's ever done Act 9 as melee knows how dangerous that is. It kills you so fast. You are standing on it when, when it's exploding. It actually almost killed this character once. Aside from that, she has the uh, Brutus slam from Act 6. And then once you kill the third boss, phase 2 starts. Phase 2 being uh, the Act 9 boss. And I think it's just exactly the same as the Act 9 boss. I, I, I don't think anything is new about this. Except you do have some lingering effects from Act 1. Like these purple swirls are from the Malagaro in Act 1. Or Phase 1. And if you were to do Doedre first, you'd have these annoying cursed totems that have a ton of HP. So Lycia in Sanctuary has all of her normal abilities but they're enhanced. So the um, inevitable, like big red slam, instead of only being one slam, it slams, and then there's like four slams that come out from that slam and like a plus. 
which just means, you know, when you dodge it, you just gotta dodge the second one that's delayed. It's not too bad. You'll see what I mean in a second. Her sights on the ground do substantially more damage. In the normal Lycia fight, you can kind of just stand to them on like any character and they don't really matter. That's not the case in this fight. You need good vis, vis mitigation to just stand in them and AFK in them. And whenever she's like, um, I forgot what, what the voice line is when she does it, but like she'll suck them all to your location and then expand them. If you stand still for that, you'll almost certainly just die. And she has like her normal things aside from that, the uh, this little frontal. It's gonna slam me soon, probably. It didn't, yeah. So plus makes is kind of annoying. But death is a thing where like all the, the spears go forward and then expand out from it. This is really bad timing. There's still a Cortex alive here. Uh, the phase 2 has um, the beyond boss bait at, and these little lightning things went out from the middle. If you're squishy, you can't do what I'm doing, where I'm just tanking them. And then you kill bait at, the phase ends. These little sights, I think, last forever. So if you're a ZDPS, more and more will spawn over the fight, and the swift death will become more and more dangerous as time goes on. She has like her normal Beyond be Slam, and it's all just kind of hasted, it's all a bit faster than the, uh, the Saint version. Like Swift Death means just don't be standing where you were standing when she cast it. You have to just move like three feet away basically. And it helps to not fight the boss right in the middle, you want to fight it kind of near an edge, so whenever she does it, the uh, big red circle, you can dodge it a little more easily. Fortress boss uh, is a heist boss, a heist boss that probably almost no one's ever fought before. I know I never fought him before uh, this league. He kind of doesn't do anything. There you go, you can end the video there. Alright, so he has these lasers that kind of come in and hit, and hit him. It's super anti-melee. If you're right on the boss's hitbox, like cycloning under him, they all hit you and you instantly die. Aside from that, this boss kind of can't kill you if you're not in melee range with him. You just kind of attack him. And he has these little like frontals that don't, they're not super lethal. He has that frontal that creates a bunch of these uh, like orbs that create lasers between them. And if you stand in those, you get a slowing debuff. And uh, they do a little bit of damage to you, but it's not very lethal. He has this spinning phase where it'll spin for like 10 seconds in one direction and then spin back the other direction. And that big kind of frontal slam thing. Not frontal, it's, a, it's just like a giant like bubble, like a flame blast, I think is what it's called. That. You just get out of it, don't stand in it, avoid the beams. Also, if you're standing in melee range with him when he's doing the spin attack, you do take damage from the little like red circle around him. That's doing constant pulsing damage. Yeah, Fortress is definitely the easiest of all the bosses. And then the last one is Uhtred. Uhtred is a boss that's pretty terrifying. If you're a melee character and you give him a bunch of remnants and you're running your expeditions rare, he's surprisingly easy in, in, in the boss version. It could just be that, that he's squishy, but he's, I, I, I want to say he's identical. He's the exact same as the version in Expedition, except the add phase in the uber version uh, spawns the other Expedition bosses instead of trash monsters. But I think aside from that, it's, it's just the same fight. He has a beam, or he spins in a circle. And if you get hit by the beam, I think it applies like a big slowing debuff to you, I think. Like a, a lot of his things have stacking action speed reductions. 
you get hit by them. The, the two main attacks he has that can actually kill you, or that, that can kill characters like mine, are these attacks where he shoots out like a bunch of balls from his hands in sequence, and they can all shotgun you and kill you very fast. Usually the way this fight goes is you kind of just dodge stuff, he starts spinning for the beam, and during the spin you kill him. This is his default attack, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna let him live. So that's what kills you. Give in, that kills you real fast. If you're in melee of him, like on the arm that he casts it from, when he casts it, you die extremely fast. Unless you're like a Defiance of Destiny character, or like a Aegis Aurora, like recovery on block character, you die extremely fast. Here's the spinning beam. So normally on most characters, you want him to cast his ability, and then while he's spinning, you attack him, and you phase him. He's pretty squishy. This character does a lot of damage, but like, he's very squishy. And during these ad phases, uh, you have these little beams coming from the mirror. If you hit by any of them, they apply a, I think it's 10% reduced action speed, and it stacks, so if you keep getting hit, that number gets higher and higher. Although every single application, I believe, has an independent duration. But don't quote me on that. As soon as you kill her, that phase ends, he comes back down. Defiant Whelp. Defiant Whelp is the other version of these balls that kill you. Except instead of only one arm, it's two arms. Super lethal if you're in melee. That's why even on builds that are, you know, are pretty melee, you really don't want to be near this guy when he's not spinning. When he's spinning, you're safe. When he's not spinning, if you're in melee, he can just kill you like, instantly. No one knows what this boss does. If you attack it, it dies. And then phase 3 starts, which is the same as phase 1. Except later in the fight, there's more beams, so it's harder to dodge as the fight goes on. Punk, you lived. This is the action speed direction. Oh, wait, another big thing that I forgot to mention. When he does those super lethal mechanics I was talking about, where he shoots out like all the balls from his hand, if you get hit by one, it gives you minus 25 cold rest, max. So like, all the ones that come afterwards will kill you. Um, I get around that by being a melding character. So my max res is based on lightning, so cold and fire reductions don't work, because my lightning is always 90, so it stays 90. But if you're not a melding character, those things kill you. Don't get away with those mechanics. Don't be melee, yeah. A lot of, like, that boss is the most anti-melee boss, like, in the game, for hardcore. Very not good. Death will never come. Twin oh, this is gonna be a, a bug fight. This boss gets really weird with Maven, <laughs> with Maven, uh, cloning. Maybe I'll kill it fast enough that it'll still just like kind of behave normally. Yeah, I think ranking the P17s, especially when their bosses, is like. I feel like Lycia, Pat Arena. Utrid. And then A Bomb and then Fortress. Because Fortress is just like so so simple. That boss kinda just bland. 